November without sitting down and having a little chat. So, hi! As of filming this talky bit, it's already been a week since this month started. So, let me fill you in. Last Wednesday, I went with my friend Ashan to the Metal Temple of Birmingham to get us some metal. Roll the clip. Dimension, I just need your undivided attention. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excellent! Thank you. We're we're, we're buying metal. We've had films and everything made here. Oh, brilliant! Because it's it's a glorious looking shop. It does. Let's go explore. We're exploring the metal shop. It's an adventure. Hello. Oh wow! Is that your camcorder there? Yeah, it's my little my little camera. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, but if ever you want to come one of the days and do it, because we've got three floors. Oh my. Yeah. Oh wow. These are all just like off cuts of off the bars and that. Oh, brill. So you sell all sorts of different metals in Yeah, they're supposed to be cheaper when you get it from out here. Yeah. Yeah. So. Are you impressed, Sam? <laughs> Should I also take six, eight, six sheets? It depends on you because my um, I'm gonna do my narrative yeah. in print and I want the narrative to be six panels. That's why I got six. It's like metal wonderland in here. It's incredible. <laughs> Real. Do you wanna have a look? I'm not gonna say no. Yeah, yeah, right. Not gonna say no to an adventure. Like stainless brass, the copper and brass are downstairs, the rounds, the flat brasses are up here, and then you've got all your alley tubes over there and in here. Yeah. So it's like, there's, how long has the shop oh, been like? It's been going up 100 and something years now. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I've been here 32. Wow. <laughs> Are you alright to come up here, yeah? Yeah. So it's like, it's the building like purpose built for the shop? No, I think if you look from outside you'll see yeah. that the windows are like church windows and oh. it was a school years ago. Wow. Yeah, apparently, yeah. But this is where all the students usually come and get the meshes and <laughs> the tubes. So you turn it from a church to a uh, place of worship for metals. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> but like we've got, the, we've got a lift in here as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. Thank you for showing uh, us. Yeah, no problem. A lot of people say that. I just think it's whatever it means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I've been here 32 years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be going like, this is incredible. And you're like, uh, detach my whole exist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I've done a video uh, filmed us. Is it, uh, Fred would tell you what it's on, but you'll see it on the internet, um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's up to with Birmingham. Yeah. It is quite interesting, to be honest. Yeah. Even though I work here, it is, uh, quite interesting. Yeah. The Wait, so the... someone made their LP out of aluminium just drawing dots. I, I love Fred and John, oh my god. My childhood <laughs> has been seen Fred and John. <laughs> <laughs> That's supposed to be me and him, you see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but there's all that. Uh, it's amazing what you people make out of things. Wait, so the the frames of the Teletubbies are made of metal? Yeah, um, I can't see where it's going. Teletubby from. has TVs, right? And yeah. yeah. <laughs> television, so I think the frame of the child. Okay, that would make sense, yeah. And we've got this one, two lads who come here. You know, the dragons and everything in the light. Like, in China and that, where they like go on displays yes. and all that. They yeah. make all them. Oh, they wow. They get loads of metal from us, loads. That's so cool. And then someone made a copper shirt. Oh, oh that's oh. awesome. Out of this, out the shoe. Is Justin all right? Yeah, Justin seems fine. Justin's Justin, isn't he? Yeah. 
It's one of them where like whatever he says, you have to have like quick pause to see. Is he joking or is he? <laughs> yeah, he's one of them, isn't he? He's the kind of guy who would yeah. send you for a long wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. And then half the class went to London to see the French Dispatch exhibition. Right now in uni, we're learning about you know narrative in advertising and historical context and cultural context and whatnot. So my friend Anna and I. We haven't seen the film, so we thought it'd be fun to go to the exhibition, look at all the things, and try to figure out what the film is about, and then go see the film to see if we were right or not. Hello! We made it! We, we totally did not go back and forth and miss Charing Cross twice. Did you not? Oh, take a photo. <laughs> well done, well done for arriving. <laughs> I have this fear that's pinned me to the wall. Though I know you love me and all. You've no intention of looking around. But there's this one worry I found Interspade in and out with ease So answer this question for me, please Will I be exciting to you? Please Through sun and through rain Let me remain exciting to you Say we're lost on a lone desert isle Area just one square mile And for the sake of keeping things neat We've plenty to drink and to eat Will I still thrill you like the sand thrills the sea? If so, answer this question for me, please What do you see? How about the, this exhibition? Yes, I, I really like it. It's very cool. Okay. I really like seeing the little models. Oh, okay. It's, I think that's the coolest part. It's just really... And you can see like when you go in with the camera, you can see how it would be really fun to film. Oh. When they were making the film. You can see like, as a cinematographer, like how you would like find it really fun and enjoyable. Oh, okay. But yeah, I love that. So, Diane is over here. We're doing the thing where we haven't seen the French Dispatch, but we've now seen the exhibition. We're now gonna try to put out guess what the film is about, and then see the film, and then see if we were right. So, I think, so the way the exhibition is laid out is almost like in three acts, I thought. So the first one is obviously gonna be about a uh, newspaper, a newspaper, I say like a magazine maybe because the a lot of the magazine cover looks like new, the new yorker mm -hmm. so maybe like an up-and-coming boutique magazine and maybe they like oh we have a cool thing but we don't have a thing that we stand for we don't have a cause and then i think they find a cause in like someone find a really interesting story about prisoners and maybe right. something yeah. shocking about prisoners and they're like oh this is the story we like we're really passionate about the rights of prisoners and prisoners should be able to express themselves and whatnot and we're gonna make the case for the prisoners yeah i'm just going off and then yeah so so that's happened and then it bleeds into the 1968 french riots or, or protests somehow and i assume the prisoners rise up and storm the bastille in a very twee way and happily ever after and no prisoners were ever abused ever again the end the end <laughs> i think yours was quite on point yeah what's I mean, your on point when you go through the exhibition there is like that's the story mm. that sort of yeah get out of what do you think i uh, know i agree with you oh okay yeah yay <laughs> <laughs> we agreed oh, yeah. <laughs> And then in the afternoon, everyone went to see the Lux exhibition. It's this big interactive digital thing. And it's not really exactly my cup of tea. So instead, I went to get a cup of tea 
with Janine of the Covent Gardener. So the exhibition was awesome. I am now rushing off to Covent Garden because I remembered that Janine of the Covent Gardener, the art director or overall editor of the Covent Gardener, has said once that if I'm ever in London, I should hit her up and we can go for coffee. And I remembered. So this morning I sent her a message saying if she wants to go for coffee. <laughs> and she said yes. So I'm now about to have coffee with the magazine editor, networking. Right, I really gotta hurry now because uh, I've got 10 minutes to get there. <laughs> Bye. So I've just finished having a little chat with Janine. Hi Janine, if you're watching this. And it was so lovely. Janine was so lovely. And I just feel great. You know, I hate the word networking because it sounds so soulless and corporate and soul-sucking <laughs> but networking could be just as lovely as messaging a person and going on a coffee with them for an hour and talking about art and illustration and print media and everything in between and forming a relationship and you both come out of it feeling wonderful and like you've learned something new and made a new friend so yeah networking can be lovely and I'm very glad that I did that today oh and if you ever find yourself in Covent Garden or Mayfair remember to pick up a copy of the Covent Gardener or the Mayfarer and you might find the work by yours truly in it, depending on which copy you pick up. I appreciate your concern When you say I've got a lot to learn You say one day The piper will have to get paid And all good things have got to end and I have been on a good thing bend, you say, you know, it's best to keep my expectations low, but I've got my head in the While they're still eggs It's easier than when they've got legs Don't hold my horses Give them free rein of courses And I don't wait for that shoe to fall No, I don't even wait at all I look, just leap I'd sell my cow for some magic beans And then the rest of this month is just gonna be a lot of work because they've decided to really really pile on the projects for uni so it'll be riveting academia content so um enjoy so packing up this drawing to be sent to a gallery exhibition in york i got to be invited to be in and the exhibition is called dreamland so this piece of Lilith and Eve chilling after the fall of civilization, I think fit the theme quite nicely. It's probably the first time you see this drawing properly because I did it a while ago and I intended to make a whole video on it, but just 
never got around to editing it. So would you like to see a full Mary Wollstonecraft style video essay about the conceptualization and making of this drawing? Because if you do, let me know and it shall be done when I have the time. But for now, these lovely ladies are going to York. Waistcoat holds a pocket watch Eyes to dot and some T's to cross You're doing all your very best So you can ensure success So I spent the whole of yesterday essentially uh, building out my sketchbook Just annotating and putting things in its right place so that when it comes to marking time the examiner knows what I'm doing and it's a little bit annoying because we have several projects going on at the same time and some projects I started earlier but haven't finished before the other project started so I have to like estimate how much space in the sketchbook I would need to put everything in and hoping that I won't need more space than that <laughs> but um yeah student life woohoo we also record everything on this thing called Padlet and it's essentially the sketchbook but in digital online website form and it's neat because it means that um, I can do tutorials with tutors without having to be physically there showing the sketchbook and you know how like holding up a sketchbook up to a camera is really annoying so um, this is neat in that sense there are also some projects that are too small or is more fully digital that I don't record in the sketchbook and I just record in the Padlet. Like this one, this is going to be all digital. It's going to be a piece of motion graphics. So I'm just gonna record it here. This project is also a bit too small to warrant its own knowledge quest episode, so I'm just gonna record it here in this vlog for you. It's called Imaginasia and that's a conference that uh, BCU has with some other universities across the world. We have to make a piece of motion graphics that is based on a color palette that the tutor have chosen and the little motion graphics has to reflect the theme of pandemic. So this is the palette that I've chosen of the four don't particularly like it, but I do like it best out of all four palettes. And these are some examples of motion graphics that I like and kind of want to draw inspiration from for my own. I don't know how often I'm going to be doing motion graphics, so I don't want to pay for a whole month of After Effects just for this one project. That seems silly. So, what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna try to pull it off in Photoshop. I've learned how to make a GIF on Photoshop in my first year <laughs> of my BA, which is like five or six years ago, and I don't think I've made a GIF since. So this should be fun. I think the concept is simple enough. I can see how it would work in Photoshop, so... Let's just, uh, let's just fucking get on with it. <laughs> this is what we've got so far. We've got a blank page. This is, um, and then here's the background. And we have plant three, plant one, plant two, and the mug. So the idea is going to be, I'm going to have yellow clouds passing across behind the window here and this shadow is going to move with the cloud to you know indicate passage of time and what i'm going to do is i'm going to manually adjust all the layers and then take a picture at each stage and then just string the whole picture together stop motion style so it's it's a very rudimentary way of doing it. It would be more slick and professional if I had done an After Effect, but I think I'll get the job done, you know?
which weirdly enough is not the main song, but somehow it became a fan favorite. Right. There's this line that says, because uh, the whole song is about her breakup and this terrible relationship, and the whole album is about this one person he did, she dated, and right. this whole drama. And, and I'm guessing uh, that person is Jake Gyllenhaal. The whole song, like having the whole song, painting the whole picture of the whole relationship makes so much sense, because this song now, it relates to every, like this song basically calls almost every single song from the whole album. It kind of like brings it all together and wraps it nicely with yeah. a bow. I think that's why everybody's so upset with it because oh my god, they got switched scar because it's part of the song. Two times in the song, so it's like a big deal. Like give me back my scar. Wait, she mention his sister because you know his sister is also famous. Yes, she does mention his sister. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because like all the comments were like, Maggie, get your brother. <laughs> Girl, get him. Yeah. He's got... Apparently, she has the scarf in her house. <laughs> How wonderful that you stopped by It's been too long You must join me for a cup A fresh haircut what you think <laughs> so the boyfriend have been playing hollow knight and i've been really enjoying watching him we've just had a really good time so i thought for christmas i would get him this cute little 3d printed figure of the titular hollow knight it was so lovely it came today and uh, I had to sand it down a bit because there were lines from the 3D print. So I did some sanding and then I accidentally broke it during sanding. So I had to glue it back together. I repainted it a little bit so that it's um, more accurate. And now in the game, there are these um, cute little grubs. And if you play the game, you know the story with um, those grubs. <laughs> I won't spoil it for you. But I kind of want to sculpt a little grub to sit here with him. And then maybe set dress it with a little bit of moss, maybe a little bit of shroom. I think that would be adorable. So I can just, you know, talk to you and catch up with you while while I do that, while I sculpt some grub. <laughs> yeah, it's been a month. I wasn't lying when I said um, <laughs> this month was going to be adventure right at the beginning and then the rest of the month is just a lot of uni work. I think I have like four projects going on at the same time today. Yesterday was an intense day. There were troubles with the train, so I got to uni late. And then when I did get to uni, it just went on and on and on. And I was so tired by the end and I didn't get home to 7 p.m. But yeah, uni has been a lot. It's been a lot of fun, but it's also just been a whole lot of work that I don't think I expected this amount of work. I don't know why I didn't expect it. But yeah, it's just been project on top of project on top of project. And I think I'm just finally like gone on top of it a little bit and here's the final product i'm i'm pretty darn chuffed with it and i think i think the boyfriend will like it it's a swell little guy nice to meet you i really talk like this all the time cheesy 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 <laughs> <laughs> Your waistcoat holds a pocket watch. I sit down to the test to cross your chin. You can't be best, so you can ensure success. Think success is not so tough. Go the same direction for long enough. Because sometimes it might be slow, but you'll get where you want to go. But first, I think you should know. We're all mad here, insane from time to 
play and good conversation. It's not bad. <laughs> so expressive. To Do a dance what over. turns out to be salvation. Don't be sad, dear. I've missed milestone. It's okay, there's something else there. Many more. I'm quite mad, dear. I think you must be too. Like. Like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> Finally happening. I've been... Um, here are three of the colorways. That's so neat. <gasps> it's... Uh, <laughs> that's so cool. Mm -hmm. I can see that you have bowed down to pressure and did not put the the orange with the blue. <laughs> I know. I did. Whenever I do that, I hear her voice like, oh, "Why did you put You're scared of color. <laughs> yeah. These are these are odd orange stationary sketchbooks, and everyone should go buy one. <laughs> Thank you. Paperbacks. They're the paper ones. Um, and they're in different. And they're all hand bound. Yeah. Ah. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Morgan Grice. I'm having the honor of having lunch with, finally. Yeah. It's been great. Yeah. I've had a really lovely time. Oh. So. It's nice to meet Morgan in person after years of <laughs> ah, stalking. <laughs> yeah, stalking each other. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, really good. Yeah. Yay. I'm bad at framing two people in one frame. Right. Okay, so I'm really <laughs> there we go. Morgan has a YouTube channel and she has a stationary line that she makes herself and everyone should go follow her and buy her sketchbooks because it's cool. <laughs> Would you like to plug yourself? I don't know. Um... <laughs> <laughs> like, subscribe, <laughs> share. You can um, follow my stationery journey at oddorange.stationery or www.oddorange.co.uk Awesome! Yeah. The link will appear here next to Morgan's face and then over here and then in the description Get yourself some goodies for Christmas! Christmas. It'll be a bit after Christmas I think the launch yeah. Well for next Christmas Next Christmas Yeah, oh, New Year's treat presents you. Yeah. <laughs> treat yourself Treat yourself You survived okay. Christmas, treat yourself Exactly, exactly yeah. New Year so. <laughs> Awesome <laughs> So there's a big storm outside It's kind of scary The winds are very strong or high Or whatever it is the word to use for big scary winds and I am also big sad because last night we found out that Stephen Sondheim is no longer with us it's like it sounds cheesy to say that the work of Stephen Sondheim helped me make sense of this whole human experience thing but it genuinely does I think someone said when I was going through Twitter this morning that Stephen Sondheim had this power of explaining and showing empathy about the human existence in a few lines of song better than some people spend books trying to do. And I think that's that's very true. And yeah, there's just been so many moments in my life where like, I'll be doing something and I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to feel. I don't know what's going on. And just a lyric from Sondheim would appear in my brain and then suddenly things make sense. You know, he's that kind of writer. And I think those are some of the best kind of writers. The kind of writers who help you understand things and make you feel less alone. And make sure you know that you're not alone because this person has clearly experienced it and has managed to articulate it in a way that is accurate to your experience. And also, personally, Sondheim musicals were 
And also, person, and also, just personally, Sondheim musicals has a special sentimentality to me because they were one of the things that me and my sister bond over. My sister and I we have a five-year gap between us, so so there was a period of time where it was like very hard for us to find a thing in common. In, especially when I was going through my little angsty teenage phase, and I was like, "No, girly things are too girly, and little kid things are, are not my thing." And I was going through that whole thing, and we were trying to find things in common to sort of bond over for each other, and we both started listening to Sondheim musicals, and just pouring over them and it was just just wonderful and I noticed things in those musicals first that my sister would have it would have passed her and then when she started growing up and she started going through the phases that I went through the things in those musicals that passed her by suddenly finally landed with her and she would like text me or like give me a FaceTime call and go, Alice, I get it now. I rewatched Company and I get it. I rewatched Sweeney Todd and I get it. And we just get to, you know, make up for that lost time. And it's just, it's just so wonderful. So I have a lot of sentimentality. <sighs> There's just so many good memories, you know? What a rich and fulfilling life. He had led and he has left us with so many things to remember him by and for that I am very very grateful so thank you Stephen I hope you enjoyed this month's vlog next month Christmas shenanigans baby <laughs> but before then stop whatever you're doing now and go watch a Sondheim musical it will change your life have a lovely, lovely day. Bye!